Right, hello my friends. This wasn't the video I was planning on doing. I was going to do a review on Astral Chain, but you know, it's a Platinum Games uh, game, and there's been a bit of controversy around that, so I'm going to wait for that to uh, blow over. Um, and I, also, I was going to do a video on Warhammer 3 in general, not like what I don't think is good about it, but since um, I was planning on that video, they have actually gotten rid of everything, so the last couple of days I've been having to play this because... You know, they went and changed everything, which is, you know, quite nice. So instead, I will complain about the Dark Elves, which were my favourite race in Warhammer 2. And um, they're not very good in Warhammer 3. Um, I'm literally only doing, only playing them because I like their playstyle. Um, I think the mechanics they've changed are quite bad. Um, I hope this, uh, somebody from CA finds this, or if it's, like, shared somewhere and they can actually, like... Fix these things. I know Dark Elves aren't a popular race because you know they're uh, they're a disorder faction. They're a bit like uh, a bit like green skins that they're not. I suppose they are bad guys, but they're not like full sort of chaos bad in a way. Um, so I should mention before we get too far, I am using a few mods in this. So one of them is to get e easier confederations. If you know anything about Dark Elves, you probably would have seen that I wouldn't usually wouldn't be able to get Malekith. Uh, this easily. They have changed confederations, so they are a lot easier, but um, actually getting Malekith and, well, I actually have all the legendary lords in this, so uh, which is a point I'll get onto in a minute. So, um, the main thing about Dark Elves is you get slaves, which is the last time I have to mention it like that, because YouTube seems to have a, have a hissy fit if you uh, mention that word, so they'll, they'll be called interns or Amazon employees from now on. So, uh, one of the biggest changes is that interns are now like an extra um, an extra part of your economy, like collecting gold, basically. Um, so when the numbers get over a certain threshold, uh, you get bonuses like you see on screen now, like construction time minus three, um, minus 15 construction cost, and plus 10 income. Uh, this number as well, I should mention, um, goes down incredibly fast so it's kind of difficult to actually keep it up it's it's one of those things where it you know the bonuses are nice but I you you're constantly fighting against it it's like you get a positive but you also get a massive negative but in in the old system you used to be able to collect interns and uh, so you collect it in like this province for example uh, this would actually increase the amount of money you got from interns and uh, interns would well, it'd be like a factor adding on to your gold each turn, so you'd get abs so Dark Elves are basically one of the richest races in this game, um, and I think this comes this change is like to nerf their economy, so you're not making as much gold, which is kind of a shame. Um, I'm I'm not a massive fan of this new system. It's it, you're constantly fighting, so um, my my interns have been going down the last couple of turns because I. Well, I defeated, like, everybody over here other than these clowns, which, uh... I'm waiting for them all to move out of their land, and then I will literally go in there and attack them, because they seem to be faffing about over here somewhere. And, um... I haven't got any armies, but... Whatever. So, um... So the bonuses you get from here are obviously de decreased construction time, which you can build, like, most things in one turn. Um... So... Yeah, pretty pretty ridiculous. Fifteen turns. Yeah, so I don't think that's. Uh, it, it's kind of balked as well. I I don't ever remember it taking fifteen turns in Warhammer Two to make this uh, settlement. Although if I manage to get to the next tier or go below, we'll see if that actually changes because I don't think that's true. Um, I th I think it's kind of skewed on if it actually calculates the amount of. Uh, the reduction time, but, uh, you know, I'm just waffling at the moment. So, um, yeah, so, economy, economy, I can't remember what I was going to say. So, econom, economically, that's the word I was trying to go for. Um, so, the, where is it? I haven't actually got any of those buildings. So, there is a building that creates money, um, which I haven't actually got because, um, it uses up interns every turn. Yeah, if you want to make money, you you need to basically sacrifice interns every turn to uh, get it. See, I, d I don't build the, that building anymore. Or if I do, I don't really build it up that much. So yeah, th this building here, 
Um, prior to this patch, that it used to be half, so it used to be minus 10 in turns, minus 20, minus 40. Um, so now I'm losing 3,109 in turns a turn because of this, as well as like, you know, losing, where is it? Do, do, do. Yeah, so you lose um, control of your provinces as well. Um, one thing I want to say about the interns or Amazon workers as well, they link it into this crappy system over here as well. So you would have thought you'd be able to do this in every province, um, which you can't. So I'll do, uh, what do I actually need in this? So we'll do that. So it fix, fixes the control. So it's a bit more stable. Um, so you can't do any of those for another five turns, but you would have thought in a different province, I would be able to, I'd be able to do that as well. No, that's greyed out, so you can only do this across three provinces because, you know, reasons. They said the reason it, they changed it is because it was too passive. I mean, that's just, like, absolute nonsense. What, you press a, t you press a button in three different places every five turns, which that's the first time I've done it in, like, 80 turns. And it's, it's just nonsense. I don't know what Creative Assembly are thinking with this. It's just, I, I don't like it. If, if anything, I'd have this number go up, but like slower or just have a bigger threshold. So the more interns you get, um, you get these bonuses. Um, so when you actually get like, like all these ones here, like, you know, minus three for buildings, you'd already be steamrolling everybody anyway. This is turn 107 and basically everybody's, you know, how many wars am I in? I'm in hardly any wars for Dark Elves. This is ridiculous. In Warhammer 2, I would be at war with, like, everybody. It's just... I don't know. They they don't feel the same. So, in Warhammer 2 as well, um, used to make lo absolutely loads of money as the, as the Dark Elves. But that all was also counterbalanced by the fact that um, armies were more expensive and everybody hated you, so you needed to field more armies to actually, like, get people off your back. Whereas here, it's just, I don't, I don't, like, armies are, like, kind of cheap. Like, that's only cost me 1,700, but I haven't actually, like, paying for most of that. So 5,600, that's, that's without, like, Attack any upkeep, upkeep reductions as well. It's just, you know, I don't know, kind of, kind of ridiculous. And, and that's, like, their best unit as well. So, um... I have actually written notes here, but I want to uh, just want to go over why the Dark Elves aren't actually like still aren't very good. So we'll uh, go through this end turn, and you can see how badly my empire is going to fall apart. So I don't actually think CA have ever cared about this race. Um, that's that's <laughs> going to be a soundbite which could be taken out of context by anybody, but I don't actually think they care. Um, so. Of the factions that are in Warhammer 2, the Dark Elves have the least unique characters. So, um, High Elves got seven because they have Alistair the White Lion as like a pseudo legendary lord. Admittedly, he's not actually that good, but he does boost uh, White Lions, which aren't actually that bad anymore. Um, you know, Skaven got six legendary lords plus um, that unique mutant rat ogre. I can't remember what his name is. Um, and then lizard men obviously have seven legendary lords plus croak, so you know a unique slan hero. Uh, whereas dark elves, they got uh, so they got six legendary lords, you know the unique ones, and four of them aren't that good. So the the two lords that came standard with Warhammer two, Marathi and Malakith, are the best ones. Uh, they have the most fully fleshed out like skill trees. And then the next one was Crone Hellebron, who they ha they had to update to make her better, um, because you know she's just a melee lord, so she's kind of lacking in in a lot of areas, and her faction mechanics kind of ran out if you uh, destroyed all the high elves in the donut. And then it was I'm trying to think who else Lockyer Fellhart, who was absolutely awful until they updated him. Uh, there's a common theme here, and then Malice Darkblade, who... <sighs> he was released alongside um, Snickitch, so that, you know, Skaven one, who had overpowering mechanics. He was absolutely amazing, and then, for some reason, they make uh, Malice's faction 
not have any positives at all. It's either you have a really good economy and your armies are rubbish, or you have really, um, or you have a really good army and, well, it's not even that. You could either make Malice a really good fighter and the rest of his army like bad. It's, and then they uh, updated that so there wasn't so many downfalls, and then they've uh, reverted it back to being like. You can't have a win-win situation, which is kind of weird because, you know, this uh, this faction here actually as well, Clan Mulder, um, they seem to get the most ridiculous uh, mechanics. I mean, everyone likes Skaven. Well, I mean, I don't because uh, I used to... I, I actually used to play Warhammer as a kid, like, you know, the tabletop version. I used to absolutely batter this guy that used to play Skaven because used to, I used to play Lizardmen, which were, you know, the direct counter. And... I mean, I enjoyed playing a Skaven, but I wouldn't say they're like... I'm not into the meme of of uh, thinking they're amazing. So, yeah, they always seem to get overpowering mechanics, whereas the Dark Elves, just like their mechanics that they got introduced in the DLC races are just weak, or they just basically don't exist. Oh yeah, I can play as uh, Rakarth, and I can recruit some animals. It's like... How is that? How is that like a fleshed-out mechanic? It's just like an afterthought. If you look at like the Sisters of Twilight, their um, mechanics when that first came out, because they released alongside. I can't remember what his name was. We lit Throt the Unclean. Um, his mechanics are amazing. Theirs were just like an afterthought. I just think, what is the, uh, what is the point? Yeah, this this end turns going around. Uh, for some uh, bad things, I yeah. So um, I can't remember what I was going to say. Also, I should mention the traits as well for dark elves are just incredibly bad. Like, so of this patch, the high elves, which um, you would have seen earlier, the knights of Calador there in that wasteland bit. Um, they got an overhaul to their traits, which were already pretty good. Admittedly, you do actually have to pay for their. Uh, traits for the for the good ones using a resource called influence which is you know fair enough however um like even their middle of the road ones which you would so they cost like 10 influence there's zero influence which are all bad traits 10 influence ones which are like comparable to uh, most traits other races get for their lords and heroes and then there's um 40 or 60 influence ones. Oh, what's going on here? He's going to attack. Um, so for so for the higher influence ones, the traits are all all pretty good. They're they're a lot better than. Uh, oh, I'm going to lose this. Surprise! Yeah, this guy declared war on me after like meeting him one turn. It's kind of weird. Uh, do, do, do. And I, I was rewarded. I was rewarded for losing that battle. How ridiculous! So. What was I going to say? Yeah, so all their good traits um, got an overhaul, which were already pretty good anyway. However, we'll um, I will literally just skip skip this. So I can uh, talk about talk about the traits because uh, I don't want to have to go back through my notes. Um, so I th I think one thing Crit Assembly can do is build up characters instead of making them, you know, instead of bringing the traits down and you know, making everyone bad, because that's a thing they seem to like to do. If if a trait's too powerful, if people are having too much fun, they will literally just change it, um, because you don't want people to play a game. I, I don't really understand that logic. It's like... Oh, yeah. I don't didn't want this province anyway. I won that. How did I win that? <laughs> okay. Oh, that's another thing we need to talk about as well. So, um, so we go over the traits quickly. So, um, all these ones of a circle, I'm not sure what that's supposed to actually represent. These are all ones which are standard across all uh, races in the game, or most of them. Um, so they're they're kind they're pr that's bad. That's a bad trait. And then these ones with like the uh, shield type. Are ones unique to the Dark Elves. So this is probably like the uh, one of the only good ones. You get a plus three melee attack. That affects your whole army. Whereas, oh, I can have a bit of extra leadership. Or I can make my lord a, a bit bit um, 
a bit stronger. This trait here is absolutely bloody useless. Plus three leadership, okay, it's not even as good as that, and it doesn't boost your army. But also, one of the things you can get for these lords is a dragon, which makes you basically immune to psychology anyway. I'm going to, like, it's, it's just bad. It's all these no unique traits in there. Uh, that one, um, I mean, it's not, not particularly good. Such a meaningless thing. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Malicious. Oh, I get to a bonus rank for death hags. I mean, there's loads of technologies that boost them as well as, like, this building here. Where is it? Yeah, pl plus uh, things for death hags as well as, like, the uh, medicinal plants resource boost them. So you don't really need it. Um, where were we? I I'm literally just complaining worse than, like, Bruno Fernandes complains that he doesn't get a free kick for Manchester United. So... Like, hardly any any unique traits, and just bad. Leadership or when attacking, so you, no bonuses if you defend. Just actually, actually ridiculous. These traits are just so friggin' bad. It's just, I don't know what they were thinking. Like, it's... I, I literally just farm for disciplined or spiteful. They're, like, the only two good traits. I just, I just want to see them, like, try and make things more fun for, like, actually building armies. Or I want one good hero it's like one hero it like a melee hero isn't really that big of a deal to like turn the tides of a battle it's just i don't know it's just absolute bloody nonsense so we'll um yeah so there's hardly any army-wide abilities and they're just you know the traits are just bad it's just it's just kind of sad really um the, the one thing that does make make them stand out a bit as you you get these things called martial name of powers so it increases their stats quite a bit um it's only applicable for lords black arc um fleet masters so have i got one on this one no the the bonuses for that are quite hefty but that you um destructive this one this oh frick it i'll just um so you're not actually supposed to be able to reset skills. So we'll we'll do this one, see if it does anything. So you select that. So the f so I either get um, that's actually the best one. So you get a choice of two. So this one's pretty bad. Weapon strength plus ten. Wow. Uh, so it boosts your whole army a lot, but you only get a choice of one, and you're not actually supposed to re be able to repick it. So this one's the best one considered by like basically everybody. So now my shades have 195 range instead of like 65 or whatever it was. Um, I couldn't have picked a better, uh, picked a better thing really. Do, do, do. Oh, I can't get arcane conduit. I can't remember what I was gonna say. So yeah, you get bonuses. So this one boosts. Uh, where is she? Do, do, do. Name of power, life quencher. So I get. Ward save for witch elves and sisters, sisters of slaughter, as well as like a reduction on um, upkeep. So it, it boosts these these clowns a bit better. The the bold bold ones. Um, yeah, I'm literally just stumbling through my through my video in this. Um, yeah, there's there's quite a lot of glitches introduced in this patch as well for dark elves. So Malekith as well. Um, I can't get one of his items, so I can't get the supreme spell shield. Um, which I need if I want plus 10 army capacity as well as like a quite a quite a decent um, what do you call it uh, reduction on doom bolt is that the one no that's not I think they changed that that's not actually that bad Re reserves per second minus 0 0.5 whatever so it yeah destroys like the best item so i'm not actually worried about that so um, i'm supposed to be given that at rank 17 i am rank 28 so yeah um that's the thing with this patch most items you can't actually get if the quest battle involves like reinforcements appearing that the reinforcements just don't show up so um l luckily i was able to get marathi's unique weapon before this patch actually dropped so yeah that's that's kind of good um, and I will actually have to show you something. So I'm playing this on very hard. Uh, doo -doo -doo. 
Oh yeah, I, I was meant to show you that there's a rogue army up there, which aren't supposed to be on land, but they somehow have. Uh, do, do, do. Where is it? Okay, so it'll be this save here. It's it's kind of funny how uh, how balked this is. Right, um, after a long loading time, which I will cut out. Um, so, I want to show you the funniest glitch regarding the the high elves. So, not the high elves, the dark elves. So this was, um, you know, a couple of turns ago. So we'll. Do this this is the same every time loot and occupy that's one of the things as well you always have to loot and occupy to get up in turn levels which is kind of kind of ridiculous so you get this building here increases relations with dark elves so what we can do now is oh 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 get a confederation with malekith you're not actually supposed to be able to do this because i got rid of the uh i got rid of the the baseline evaluation penalty so we'll um get Malekith. So one thing I actually want to mention is there's they have a mechanic called loyalty for Dark Elves which um, you get a so every end well the beginning of every turn you well not every turn every couple of turns so this Lord's got like 10 loyalty um, it will bring up a thing it'll be like Akana Moonshadow is in, involved in a thing you event you see off screen and it would say what what do you want to do you can either get a really powerful item, and it would say like slay her or what, slay the sorceress or whatever. Um, so either, so the penalty is either you lose loyalty and you gain a pretty powerful weapon or faction-wide bonus for a couple of turns, or you use money to increase their loyalty and another bonus or whatever. It's it it varies. Some of them are really good. Um, that mechanic kind of goes out the window after a while. It, it just doesn't happen. So, um, yeah, so th these are all the lords I got from uh, Malekith up here, and I'll show you the funniest thing regarding them. So th this is a legendary lord he actually confederated, so that, that doesn't matter. Zero loyalty, and they all have zero loyalty. Like, So when it gets to zero loyalty, they will defect, and also I can't get rid of them. You can't even do the old trick of putting them in the water and, and uh, disbanding them. I literally just cannot... I can't do anything. I'm losing 19,000 a turn because of this. Um, so the, the way I actually got got rid of it um, is just by using a remove loyalty mod, uh, disbanding everybody, like renaming them and then disbanding everybody and calling them like, so I just rename this lord. I can actually rename them. So I just put like, oh, no. Uh, I can't even write now. And then they'll appear as that in the thing. It's it's quite good if if um, you've had an event and you just uh, where is she? Oh, they've got Malekith's wounded. Yeah, so it's it's pretty good if you've uh, just gone through a loyalty dilemma. You've lost a bunch of loyalty because you wanted a decent weapon, and uh, yeah, like what am I supposed to do here? Is this a, is this a joke? <laughs> That's funny. I'll see if I can get a loyalty dilemma to a, to appear. Like, I literally... I, I can't do anything. Like, are, these will all defect to a f faction called Cult of Loy uh, Cult of Pleasure Separatists or something. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's kind of funny. So so that doesn't work if you confederate lords. Um, that's not actually to do with the, the mod either. Well, how has she got... Right. I want to see if this actually works. I, I doubt it would. So winning a battle um, does man, actually you are the enemy. does net you loyalty. I'm not sure if that's just because they haven't haven't battled. I just realised she won't stand and fight, so that was actually pointless. Yeah, I thought so. Bloody hell! Well, that was that was Mistress fucking waste of time, wasn't it? Should have disbanded a few things, but whatever. Um, oh, that is the other thing as well. Um, so there's a bunch of units in this game. Did they have any? Yeah, so this one here, as well as... Did I have any... No, I don't. It's kind of annoying because I don't recruit some of these units. 
Well, you'll see why I don't recruit these units in a minute. Oh yeah, so so this army's got a few of them. So these units here and uh, this one were introduced in a DLC called Shadow and the Blade. So that is called a Bloodrack Shrine or Bloodrack Medusa. So in this is this all the technologies you get. It, it boosts most of your things. Um, most of your stuff. Um, these aren't actually, those units never actually appear in this list, at when, whereas they used to. So, Study of the Chaos Waste used to provide ward save for Blood Rack Medusas and Shrines, and uh, yeah, it just doesn't appear. So, actually pointless getting most of these. That used to uh, reduce upkeep for Scourge Runner Chariots as well, which is actually quite a good unit. Um, I would get if I, you know, actually got a bonus for, you know, actually. Um, for doing this as well. I want to mention as well the tech tree is absolutely garbage for the Dark Elves as well. Like some of these are just like pointless. Also, oh, I can get plus rank two rank on lords, which I already get from buildings anyway, as well as plus ten leadership. You know, they have fairly good leadership and quite good fighters, so they shouldn't be running away anyway. Um, but this one, the the by the time you get this, every high elf will be at war with you. All plus 10 diplomatic relations, they never peace out with you. So what is the point in this? It's ju It just makes no bloody sense. It's just, like, I, I really would like CA to just go over the tech tree of the Dark Elves and just, like, fix a few things. Like, just get, like, why is this even a thing? Like, the, yeah, like, the time you're going to get that, everybody hates you anyway. It, like, just, I don't know, have it with, like, Forces of the Chaos or something. It's just, yeah. I, I, I. Hopefully, this is this ramble's gone on. Uh, actually, been of help to um, to to people. Why well, I, I say that? Help to people. Like I can't even get. I can't even replace these lords. That's the most disappointing thing. Lord of zero loyalty. It's like I wonder bloody why. Right. Yeah, so so this is a fun glitch that uh, I'm I'm not gonna actually deal with because I'm gonna uh, quit the game in a minute. Yeah, it just I don't know, actually ridiculous. So th that is my main issues with the Dark Elves. Um, I I used to love them, but I I completed a campaign as all of them except for Rakarth because you know he's kind of kind of boring. So. Um, yeah, hopefully that gives a bit of an insight. If you're not familiar with Warhammer 3, 1, 2, or 3, this will be a very meaningless video to you. Um, I hope, Hopefully somebody from CA, you know, takes a bit of note. I mean, I'm not expecting them to be, like, the best race in the game. I just want them to be, like, on par with, well, with the other Warhammer 2 races. I mean, they made significant changes to all the lizard men, which, you know, I would have thought I'd be a massive fan of because I used to collect them. Uh, yeah, I used to be a lizard man main, and uh, yeah, it's just I don't know. It's very this is very disappointing. I know it's a beta, but it's just like I don't think they really ever cared about this um, this race. So I was watching uh, a guy called Legend of Total War last night, and he's saying that whenever he covers Dark Elves on a live stream, they are um, one of the least popular. So. I'm inclined, like, usually you can, judging by audience size and stuff, you can kind of gather the general uh, consensus on uh, on stuff like that, which is kind of disappointing because I, I really like this race. I, I just kind of hope they'd improve them enough so people actually got, them play, got playing with them again. Obviously, this probably does apply to a lot of other races as well uh, uh, in terms of, like, the technology not working, not getting items, you know, bad confederation glitches i wonder if that happens with skaven as well if you get a, if you confederate a lord if they uh end up with zero loyalty as well it's just i don't know because the loyalty mechanics are fairly fairly big thing for the for the dark elves it's just i don't know i i don't really th uh, think they put any real like thought into the mechanics of the dark elves so um yeah see i've got a got a better thing there with uh, my bonuses so um yeah, I don't want to come off as, like, mean, but it, and it is a beta, so I would, like... Hopefully they, they fix things up, but, I mean, if something's not popular, they don't usually, like, try and try and fix it or in a meaningful way. I mean, Skaven will probably get a buff because everybody loves them for some bloody reason. Yeah, like, 
Skaven are overpowered, and yet they keep getting buffs. It's like a we like weak races in this seem to, you know, get, get hammered into the ground like a tent peg. Yeah, because you know ambush attacks, building bu building your buildings up to like tier four straight away, using food and stuff. That's not overpowered. Oh yeah, a mechanic where one of your factions gets a nuke to just bomb people and wipe out units instantly you know that's not overpowered but all can't have can't have a rich economy for a race that's not even liked by people as in like in this game if dark elves like that was the thing that offset them you know the you get more money because people don't like you so um hopefully yeah um things are fixed for the dark elves and uh hopefully this video was a bit insightful and i hope i didn't ramble too much um a bit of a shame if i have but it is what it is. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you did, sorry I didn't show any battles, but um, you know, it, the 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 battle mechanics for for Dark Elves are fine. Basically, they're not they're not that bad. Um, yeah. So um, thank you very much for watching. Oh, actually, one thing I do want to mention. I didn't I didn't mention it before. So you get these rights as well, which cost uh, interns. These are actually supposed to cost eight hundred, but the lords I've just uh, recruited reduced the cost. So um, going back to the thing about the the intern levels going down constantly, I would only have them being used by these, which I'd have more frequently and have a few better bonuses. Increase the, increase the cost for those, but also have the rights cost interns. So that would be the only thing that would bring it down through the threshold. And just have these numbers like absolutely massive thresholds. So but so. It links to like the early game, mid game, and late game, depending on, and have it changed depending on who you're at war with as well. Like not at war with, I mean, how many um, wars you're expecting like the player to be in. So if you're Malekith, for example, you get chaos over here, dwarves there, Skaven here, um, beastmen down here. So he's got quite a few wars. So when you're expecting a lot more wars, like mid game. Um, you'd be fighting more battles, you'd be getting more interns, and then that would lead into like the mid-game tier of, you know, bonuses and intern level, and then uh, end game where like all the forces of order are against you, you'd get like these sorts of bonuses. So you can sort of keep up with it as well. Um, and the other thing as well, they don't want you to be really recruiting as Dark Elves. Um, so initially you only get two recruit slots per province, which is actually ridiculous. And also your your black arcs don't grow as grow as quickly to uh, field as many armies, so it's it's very slow and very painful. Um, I think that's covered everything. Sorry, that was a bit of a ramble at the end. And um, thank you very much for watching. If you did, and I'll see you with an equally bad and poorly thought out video sometime in the future. Bye bye.